Hello! Welcome to episode 2 of MSC Live. Simon's going to kick us off with the majority of the talking today, hopefully. Hopefully, we'll see. And hopefully I don't jump in and get angry. Oh, Simon, you're up. Okay, so today we're going to talk about workplace posture and also strength as you age. Okay, so kicking off, did you know 68.5% of the Australian workforce are seven? No, I didn't know that, Simon. <laughs> what would that be? Uh, so most people actually sit 76% of their day while they're in their office chair. Okay, and it's actually the second worst lifestyle disease behind, uh, lifestyle disease behind smoking. Okay, so for all those that smoke, if you're sitting all day, that's probably number one. You've got, the, you've got the double whammy. And we didn't just pull that out of our ass to make some like fun, like scary stat for you. Where did you get that from? You got that from a legitimate source, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, so I actually read uh, um, journal articles, and unlike all your accountants and lawyers who use WikiLeaks and Wiki whatever. And what was that look at me for? <laughs> I read journal articles. Well, no, I was having a dig at lawyers and accountants. <laughs> because okay. I know Heidi actually uses Wiki something to uh, get all their answers. There you go, shout out, shout out to Heidi. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Brady, at least you've got rid of number one. Yeah, so now you just got to stand up more. <laughs> All right, uh, seriously though, so um, so 76% of your day sat at an office desk, um, doing your emails, answering phones. You actually need to start moving a bit more, okay? So the improvements have been shown to increase your cognitive benefits, so that's things like decreased stress and depression, increase your concentration, Improve your memory and be actually faster at learning. Okay, so that's if you actually get up, move around every hour, go for a walk, um, just anything really rather than just being sat at your desk where you get yeah. tired. Yeah, so this is something that I implemented last year with a lot of my clients with daily routines and, and stuff they could do during the day. Uh, best example I have is um, Craig, Craig Carter. He, he won't be watching this because Craig doesn't have Facebook or spend time on Facebook or would like to do, but I'll give him a shout out anyway. So Craig, Craig is the, one of the stiffest people that I think I've ever met in my life when he first came down here. Like, try and get him to do a walkout. And you know when we all do walkouts, we get down to the floor and we try and lift the chest up? Well, Craig tried to lift the chest up, he might as well just done a push up, and his whole body just comes up. So it's something that we really focused on, and we gave him a lot of stuff last year on, because he's a very office, office occupation guy, he, he daddles in many different things. Um, he spends a lot of time sitting and his hips are really locked up as a part of that. His pecs are also very locked up. So every, I told him every hour, set a time on your phone for every hour, and every hour he would get up and he would just walk, go, he would just walk around the office once, give his pec like a 30 second stretch on one side, on the other side, 30 seconds on the hips each side, and then he'll get back to work and he, he actually, like his mobility actually increased quite a lot over not a very long period of time. I think it took a month and we're seeing some pretty sizable differences in him. And now he's, and that was something that he also implemented the uh, free stretches. So the walkouts, sumo twists, and spine mans, he, he was doing those every day. Um, obviously he's got the Christmas, he's got fat, and now he's coming back and he's stiff as a board again. But we're, 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 um, you know, we're building that back into him as we speak. So it was something that was really effective to see. Okay, so workplace posture, I want you to... Also, quickly, before Simon gets onto this, I would just like to say something. We should have a drinking game for every time. Because <laughs> I noticed it in the last video when I rewatched the video of last, of, of, like two weeks ago, and you, and you kept saying, now seriously guys, I reckon there should be a drinking game for every time that Simon says, but seriously guys, there should be, like one should have to do a shot. I reckon that'd be quite funny. A lot of people play one for every time you say stuff? No, because everyone will be drunk. But anyway, so I'll continue on. All right, so workplace posture. Okay, so I want you to think about how you're sitting. Like, I'm pretty comfortable with how I'm sitting at the moment. But when you're in your uh, office chair, office desk, um, it comes down to your ergonomics. So you just gotta play around with it, see what feels right. Okay, so if you're slouched in your chair rather than sitting upright, you're going to actually put a lot of compression and um, uh, load through your spine, not in a good way. Okay, so that all comes down to your joint alignment. So sit up tall, 
uh, shoulders down and back. So everything we're doing down here in the gym, okay, so all that upper back work that you all love to hate. Um, Handful of parts, as many reps as you can do, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, all that stuff helps. So, like, because you all have those rounded uh, backs. So even if you build up the endurance, every hour you've got to sit for five minutes in good posture, and you build it up every week, you add a couple of minutes, you can get to that hour quite comfortably, sitting upright, sitting correct. Um, that will also help reduce your headaches, uh, your general joint flow. And then, yeah, we were chatting before, just before we came on, who actually stands up, okay? It's who works while they stand. Oh, yeah, the, the common myth that you should stand for the entirety of your day and think yeah. that that's gonna fix all your problems. So you got, you got all those machines, you got the treadmill machine, you got the standing desk, you got the BOSA ball, you got the chair without a back support. Well, there's all these uh, crazy tools out there, but it comes down to like everything we preach down here is about balance, okay? So the whole sit be stand is, we reckon, 50% of each. So you could do it like every time your phone rings, you stand up to answer your phone, chat to the person on the phone. Um, it's more about just breaking your sitting. like. You just you get. I do. I do the same thing. If I'm doing a massive, if I'm programming for the sake of those guys, I will sit in the office for the entire day, feel absolutely terrible afterwards, and just program the whole thing out. Because I get in the zone, I have to keep going. If I break that zone, like my thoughts go other places, you know, stuff like that. So I get it. I understand exactly what you talk about. What you guys suffer through when you're sitting at your desk and oh, I've just got to get this done. Like you're in the zone. I don't want to break that zone, but it's actually something you've really got to focus on. So times on your phones are really useful for that, like send an hour timer every time, as soon as the timer goes off, as you turn it off, put it on the other side of the gym or something, or for us the gym, but like for you guys maybe on your mate's desk, you have to get up, turn, your, turn the timer off, walk back. You've just broken a bit of a sitting cycle, your muscles can open up, shut down again, and keep on going. So it's on. So you can carry it. You're on your no, that was it, that was it. That was it for that bit. Okay, so yeah. Get, yeah, it's that balance, so the sit be stand. Uh, if you've got any more questions about it or you want help uh, about setting up your office, let us know and we can kind of give you some guidelines on how high to have your uh, monitor, how high to have your chair, where your mouse should be, what sort of mouse should be. The best thing we ever did down here was getting an actual desktop for the office. Yeah. I've noticed it ever since. On laptops, laptops are great because they're so mobile, you can take them wherever you want to go. But on laptops, I just fight all the time and just like da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. on that, you know, we've got the we've got, we we managed to get the, the desktop monitor and everything like that. Now we've got the keyboard. I can sit up so much easier. I like, feel good. We've got like this chair's pretty good um, and just completely type it out. But if I'm sitting not at that that desk and trying to do something on my laptop, like Simon's holding the desk for the whole day, I'm you know I feel so bad. I keep cranky and Simon. I don't really care, but that's okay. Continue on, Simon. Uh, I actually wanted to ask or find out if anyone of their workplaces have an uh, initiative in place for any, any like, physical health. Um, so if you do have something, it'd be great if you could maybe comment below or send it through and then we can uh, maybe chat about it next time or try and raise awareness about workplace uh, initiatives to increase physical activity and posture at work. Uh, I'm not sure where Ryan's gone, but uh, he's going to come back in a minute with a cable. The phone's on my battery. All right. So if we if we cut out, uh, that's because Ryan hasn't charged his phone. Like he doesn't charge the work phone, and I have to put it in every morning. <laughs> so our next big topic, which I know Ryan's looking forward to ranting about, is going to be strength training as you age. Okay, so get ready for a round here, guys. Yeah. Just trying to poke the bear and see what happens. Okay, so that's like, great. Most people are coming down. We've got people in doing more strength-based training. There's obviously that big fear of if I do strength training, I get bulky. If uh, I want to do hit, I want to lose weight. I've uh, got to do cardio, all that kind of thing, but realistically, strength forms the basis of all your programs and it's better for long-term health. So if you've got osteoporosis, or it's actually hereditary, so there's a likelihood if it's in your family, possibly you might have it. Um, mainly, so once you get over the age of 60, one in three women have it, 
and one up to one in six men have it. Okay, so ladies, it's gonna it's gonna be more likely common that you may have it. Uh, so you you'll start to notice from the age of about between 30 to 40 years of age, you start having bone loss, like not actually losing bones, but uh, bone density. And the best way to prevent it, so if you're starting in your 20s and 30s and 40s, is resistance training. And it's actually, research shows, if you're lifting at 80% of your 1RM on a regular basis, that is ideal for long-term um, bone density. And okay, it's the same that bone density. I was just checking in to see how many people were actually watching us. And there's actually a few people watching us. So thank you for that, for once, the people who are watching us. It's the second one we've done. Really appreciate it when people get on during their lunch breaks and have a watch. What we're talking about was talking about old, um, losing bone density. Yes. Strength is key. Yes. I heard you say strength is key earlier and triggered something in my mind. Okay, so strength is key for a number of factor, factors. Strong things don't break. If you get a twig from outside, not very strong, and you get a metal rod, which one's going to break first? Yeah? Obviously, the twig's going to be easier to break. So if you can build up strength through your muscles, around your joints, takes the pressure off the joints, decreases the chances of developing you know, uh, joint injury, joint issues uh, and stuff like that, and you know, just injuries in general, you're gonna be a lot better off, takes the pressure off the bones, and the bones also, every time you do something that's compactive, they break down and they repair themselves better. Okay, it's a fundamental like, principle that is applied to every part of our program, like strength, strength programming, conditioning, your body is naturally built to adapt to a stimulus, yeah? So if the stimulus is your muscles, are get, your bones are getting compressed, they're going to adapt to that and get better because your body is always trying to make you better. Short rant, that was it for the moment. Very good, very good. I might, I might have a second, but that was it for that. All right, so moving on to through that. So low back pain, obviously a big area. That's also related to how you sit in your workplace. So going back to- Oh, we got a, we got a like. The tight, the tight hip flexors, uh, yeah, your joint alignment, it's also how you sit in your car, um, all your day-to-day -day tasks, okay? So when people talk about sore backs, I always run through how they sit at work, how they drive their car, okay? Most people slouch in their car. Uh, if they got a manual, they usually have like their feet hanging out to the side rather than toes straight down the middle. So that opens up the hips, uh, actually causes more damage than good. Uh, how you do your dishwasher, you'd like to have to have a dishwasher when you, if you have to wash your dishes by hands, okay, so I know that since I've got a dishwasher and I'm not washing my dishes by hand, my back's been a lot better because I'm not having to reach over the sink that hasn't been set up to an appropriate height for me. Um, Is it too high up for you? Yeah, a little bit actually. <laughs> so we have a little step for Heidi so she can reach up and over. Heidi's copping a lot of flack on this live, I hope she's not watching it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of postural elements that you got to be aware of when you're think, doing things day to day. You can't just assume uh, you're doing everything with good posture. You might be, but um, generally you're not taught to do things. You have to learn to do things yourself. So you've got to start thinking about what you do every day, what causes pain, especially in that lower back area, lumbar area, and uh, then you can start isolating and eradicating which things aggravate something and then you can be like, okay, so it's not that, that and that, but it could be, I don't know, doing this, this and this. And then when you're in the gym, help build up all that strength so Brian can talk about his lower back pain and strength training. Oh, okay. Um, so lower back, so I've had a few guys, I've had a few guys recently with lower back issues. Um, Johan, probably one of the, Johan, the tall Frenchie bloke who likes to surf and surfs pretty well and judges pretty hard. Um, with, with Yo, he had a lot of issues regarding like weakness around the hips and he was also very tight around his hips. So the combination of being weak and tightness is very bad. It's generally why a lot of people get um, impingement issues and lower back pain. And that, that's across you know, a lot of like, most of the joints in your body. If you've, got, if you've got tightness in one area, weakness in the other, and they're, they're fighting against each other all the time, it's generally going to go bad. So, uh, we did a lot of work on glutes, um, glute strength, quad strength, um, upper back strength, making sure all the areas around that area was, was strong enough to support him because he's quite he's a very tall guy with very long limbs. 
So therefore, every time he goes out, he's got, you know, he's very long, levers are longer, increased stress on, on joints if they haven't got the appropriate strength to deal with that, that's, you know, that resistance. So, strengthened up, and then we do a lot of psoas, so psoas release. Um, so that's where, one of the favorite ones for those ones, we get a, a spiky ball and a dumbbell, and we stick it in there, and it's just a breathing party after that, just to relax and make yourself feel better. Um, that one tends to, that was a really good one for just sorting out a lot, a lot of back issues. I, I've done videos on it before, and I'll post one in the, in the group later. Um, and another one is the band resisted hip flexor stretch. So we sell the band around one of the poles, put it behind your hip. So it's a normal hip flexor stretch, but you've got the band pulling your hip forward. And what that does, it pulls your femur further forwards into the, the joint socket and allows your, your psoas to, to actually get a stretch out and do some release work through there. That's also enough, that's, those two are probably my favorite um, psoas releases. And um, the psoas is a very important muscle to make sure it is um, loose because it, it's a hip flexor, so every time you sit it gets very tight. So if you can release that, lengthen it out, it, it helps tremendously with lower back issues and then you've got obviously QL that needs to be strengthened up as well. That's pretty much how I've been doing a lot of back. So glute knee, glute max, glute, 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 hip flexor. So really in whole, if you strengthen up your glutes and you release your hip flexor muscles, you generally are on the right direction for decreasing your lower back issues. It's something that I've found and something that's been talked about a lot in a lot of reasons. A lot of back pain comes up a lot online and there's a lot of, there's a lot of good content on there about lower back releasing and making it feel better and it's all it's all very progressive because you've got to be able to make sure you're getting it better and then you're teaching your body that this is the right place that your body should be in all the time so it's, you know everyone everyone gets a quick release but then your body would like to revert back to its old ways because it's adapted to that way so you've got to t consistently teach it to get out of that habit for it to realize okay this is now the correct way I'm going to adapt to that stimulus Someone's good. Someone's probably got some more stats. No, I'll probably hold it there for stats, but uh, I guess I'll give you some homework or uh, something to take away. So over the next week, if you guys can uh, think about how you sit at work, think about how you drive, and uh, start trying to implement a better posture. Okay, and then you can chat to myself, Ryan, Jess, about during the week. Um, so if you. Just yeah, have a look at how you set up at work generally, because that's where you spend 75 or all your day pretty much, and you're sitting down for 75% of your day. And start implementing either the uh, setting your phone alarm off once an hour to get up, standing up to answer your phone calls, adding in some of the stretches, going for a little walk, uh, and see how you feel during the week. And the stretches don't have to be like, do the walk, do walk out, do so many twists, because you'll look stupid in the office, okay? You'll look like an absolute numpty. So don't do that, because all your office people will go, what are you doing? You're an absolute retard. But maybe go and do, like, just a general pec stretch, which will help a lot, you know, if you consistently stretch out your pec every hour throughout the six-hour day. You're getting, you know, six times when you stretch your pec out over a consistent day. Consistency with stretching is a lot better than sitting down for an hour and trying to stretch your pecs out over an hour, you know? like. So if you can consistently do five minutes a day, or two minutes a day even, it's going to be a much better daily benefit for you than sitting down for the same amount of time in one sitting. Because again, you're consistently reminding your body that this is now the way it wants, there, where we want our muscles to be and have the length of muscles that we want it to have. Hip, like pec is an example, where a lot of people are very tight for their pecs, but you know, even a quad stretch, everyone's tight for their quads because most of your quads you know, attach up with your hips, so it ends up being a hip flexor as well, a double action. So, the same thing, even a quad stretch will help you heaps. Okay, so yeah, over the next week, uh, just have a think and yeah, get back to us on any of that. Um, I guess we'll move on and kind of wind this up. Are we not, have we talked to a lot about training with, as you're old? Oh, oh that's we're just doing well. Yeah.
kind of went back to workplace. Yeah, so go, we'll go back to training as you age. Very, like, Simon put too many stats on the whiteboard and didn't allow me to write my little do 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 do. This is what we're going to talk about. This is what we're going to talk about. This is what we're going to talk about. So this is what happens when you let Simon go crazy on this stat whiteboard. I'll take a photo of the whiteboard afterwards and you can you can see exactly how much stat work Simon did. Oh, carry on talking about training as well. No, I will. I'm just saying like you did a lot of good work and people should know that you do this work. Um, so training as you age, I'm just going to go on a little story time now. So story time, um, Maggie. Maggie has been one of my first clients since we got down here at FSC. Um, when she first turned up, she had just had shoulder surgery on her left shoulder, her left shoulder, and that was to do with osteoarthritis and getting it cleaned out and getting it straight, scrapped away. Um, so she can't overhead press now. That's just the way it is. She's like overhead pressing movements are not something that's going to ever be that comfortable for her. Yeah, you know, she's 65 plus. Uh, nah, she, she's 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 stoked with it. I I think she's actually. No, no, she's around that age, okay? She's mid-60s, you know, like, she's getting older. She's very happy about how she's getting older. She, you know, she realises that age is just a number. She, dead, she can deadlift off the floor. So most of her work now is doing a rack pull because, you know, as you get older, you've got to adjust stuff and make things slightly easier. Like, is a deadlift the best activity for her? Probably not. We can do a rack pull and get the strength, strength benefits out of her glutes doing it that way. But, I've lost my floor process. Oh, off the floor, she could deadlift 115 kilos. Like she's 65 plus and can do that. No issues at all. Knees are now 100% better than when she, she, she walked in. She came in with a couple of knee issues. Knees were weaker, a lot of back issues every now and again. Um, majority of her niggles now only occur when she's do, done a long flight to a conference or something, and then she's come back. That's generally the only time we ever get any niggles, and that is just, you know, where we implement programming and deload her for a couple of weeks and recover her after a long piece of time. Just everything takes a bit longer. And for her, most of her program, most of her session is a warm up. Like, I, I probably hang out with Maggie for about 20 minutes out of her 45 to an hour program because most of it is her warming up and she likes warming up by herself. So she spends up to 20 minutes doing, a, doing her warm up, and that warm up includes clams. Glute bridges, uh, glute burnouts, band pull aparts, all that stuff, and high reps, getting the volume into her body and her system so she can you know, have the capacity. And when she gets up, and then we take a long time warming up the strength activity that she does. So we generally do a rack pull on Wednesday. Rack pull Wednesdays is for Maggie. And you know, we'll either do a max effort or we'll do a volume, depending on, you know, we alternate the weeks so we, you know, so her. The intensity isn't too high week to week and she can adapt from it. So she'll come in and we'll go, all right, we're, today we're going in twos, we're going up in twos into a max effort two and we'll go up from 60, five kilos all the way up to where we are. Like a very slow progression, warming her up, giving her plenty of rest and you know, she'll hit most, she's very consistent of hitting over 100 kgs every time she does a rack pull. What's pretty good for someone at that age, and with the amount of issues that she had in the shot. Shoulders are now fine, as long as we don't overhead press her. Um, everything else is now good. And that is, you know, from consistent, consistent work, warming up correctly, and actually getting your blood flow. Like we went through an extended warm up on Thursday night, and everyone seemed to really enjoy that. Um, that, that stuff's going to start coming in a little bit more. I think we're going to implement that more into everyone's programming, a bit more extended warm ups just to get people more warmed up, and then we can get a bit more volume into you guys and you know, increase your work capacity a little bit. But at the end of the day, she's 65, and she's never been in better physical condition, apart from a shoulder that's busted from surgery. You know? So just a, just a little thing for you guys to think about. As you get older, you can't get stronger. Like She started up doing 80, now she's up 115. I think she's up, she might have done 120 for one once. Not too sure. I have to check, but yeah, like she's a very strong lady. Uh, so I'm nice. stop, stop me talking anymore. <laughs> um, so I guess that's why we don't do any of the gimmicky shit you see on Instagram and Facebook of all these other gyms doing crazy stuff. We have a process, and that is to make sure. Oh, here we go. No, we're here now. <laughs> so no, we're not going on a tangent because I've got a train. <laughs> Okay, next time, maybe next time. So we'll talk about that next time, okay? It'll be part of, I guess, Strength Training as You Age, part two. No, okay. the next one we're doing, the next one we're doing, what also fits into this one is the new new level-based system that we're implementing for everyone. So 
A lot more information will come out about that in the couple, next couple of weeks, but we're still going to finalise. So that's why we do all the things for posture down here, is because everyday life. Everyday to... life is a lot more important than anything else. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that'll be part two, strength rings you age and our new training system that we're looking to implement across the board. Uh, and you'll start seeing more about it over the next month. Over the next month, yeah. All right, we've got some updates for you and some reminders. So first reminder, we've got Australia Day this weekend. Um, so that's tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. It's Friday today. 7.30 to 8.30 class and 8.30 beers for those who want an early beer. There will be beers there. There is yoghurt. I was given a lot of yoghurt and we want to give it to you as a token of our appreciation. Slash, I can't, eat any, I can't eat any more yoghurt and Simon doesn't really like yoghurt. Annika, can you bring down one of the yoghurts for me so I can show everyone? Thank you. Annika just turned up for everyone. Uh, and then, yeah, public holiday Monday, 7.30 till 9. Okay, it's the class. So you can come in either at seven, anytime between 7.30 and 8.15 to get a class done. Um, I haven't actually looked at the temperature, so I'm not sure if it's going to be a hot one. So if it is, get in early at 7.30. Um, unless you want a big sweat. So if anyone's a fan of, of these bad boys, or these bad boys come good out, I can't eat any more because... I actually had one of those ones, they're pretty good. Yeah, these are really good, but they're really tasty. These ones have a bit of you know, chocolate and whatnot in them. They're also really tasty, and it reminds you of when you're a young child and you get those really bad yogos, and you can dump like the lollies into your yogurt, and it tastes really good. But this one's supposed to be a bit healthier. Or it's supposed to be healthy. That's what they kept telling me when they turned up, and I was halfway through programming the whole day. So who knows, maybe Cassie can shed some more light on those. Yeah, maybe we can talk to Cassie about that one. Uh, so that's public holiday. Uh, for those that, there'll be a few people not here tomorrow. Okay, so Ryan, he's doing a 5K with, well, I think Tom, Nick, and Brent are doing their two and a half Ks. Yeah, Brent's doing a 1.2. What? Brent's doing a 1.25. Tom is doing a 2.5. Nick is doing a 2.5. Uh, I'm doing a five. And uh, that's all about our, our Rotness, our Team FSC Rotness pre uh, preparation. And we've got we've got David doing a 10K tomorrow. Dave is doing a 10k tomorrow as part of his qualifications for Port to Pub. His Port to Pub solo swim, what is quite exciting. It should be a good day. At the start of the week, I was quite nervous because it was going to be quite windy and terrible, but now apparently it's going to be sunny, lovely, and not too windy. So hopefully the jellyfish stay away. Um, what else have we got? Member of the month. So oh, member of the month! So our first member of the month. First is... ever member of the month is the Beaver! I believe he's watching right now. Yeah, Dan Beta, you are a member of the month, mate. The reason why I'm giving you member of the month this, this month is because since you've joined, you've been a delight, you've done everything I said, you've been encouraging to everyone, and you know, I think you need it. I think you need a bit of encouragement every now and again. I reckon you done a great job. Um, it was very close between you and someone else, but we'll see if that someone else continues to be very good over the, I'm not gonna mention any name because that would just throw the cat out of the bag. Well, I think we planned these things. We don't. We came up with it just then beforehand. But very valid. We took a, a paper scissors rock on it. Dan, you are our member of the month. We'll be putting it out in a newsletter that is coming out next week, early next week. I have a little blog written up. Simon is also writing a little blog. And I, I, there's there's going to be a nutrition bit in there as well uh, with any upcoming dates that we think you guys should know about as well in that. So that's part of our, our monthly newsletter that we're doing this year. Um, so um, Wembley. Wembley, yeah. the place that should have been opened in September. So we're getting another step closer. Paperwork by the builders have been submitted. Hopefully the toilets, they start building them towards the end of next week. So we well, hope it's a little bit every closer. Time. Yeah, edging a little bit closer. So probably looking at another month. But, uh, Getting there. But yeah, slowly but surely, we are moving closer to FSC number two, the baby. The baby is running late. Um, nothing we can do. It's all stuff that's out of our control, to be honest. So uh, the holiday periods are a joyful time for many and a very headachy period for others. So uh, I believe that is all today. That's it today. Yeah, we were going to have a midweek beer, but we forgot that was our goal. Yeah, we so. forgot it. We've, we've, we reminded us, but we both reminded ourselves because we kept each other accountable. So, as we talked about in the last sec two weeks ago, we kept each other accountable and said, no, we will not have a beer on Friday during this episode to advertise that we are having beers tomorrow. 
after the session. Well, we can have a beer tomorrow. It's not the midweek. But it's not. It's not. It's not during the week. Yeah. All right. So thank you for everyone to tune in. I'm just going to try and turn this off now. You had to look at my face while I try and figure it out. Oh, thanks everyone for watching. I'm just going to give you a shout. Julian, thank you. Bredo, Annika, you're apparently watching, but you're stretching over there, and I can see that you're not on your phone. Uh, Mum, hello, Mum. Hello, Nick. Oh, and Talara, my favourite, my favourite person from St Hilda's that doesn't put her programs away. Uh, thank you.